ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. Or maybe not, you don't know. The names have been changed to protect the idiots who played the parts. Dragnet, the story of your police force in action. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Tuesday, April 27th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day shift for the Grand Larson Division Petty Theft Unit. My partner's name is Frank Smith. The boss's name is Captain Menard. My name is Friday. It was 7.29 a.m. when I arrived at headquarters and entered room 218. Burglary. Frank logged in at exactly 7.43 a.m. A fact I deduced without ever looking at my watch because since 7.30 I boiled three two-minute eggs, two three-minute eggs, and made 60 cups of instant coffee. Frank, you're 15 minutes late. That's when one hell of a long target does it. Joe's copying us. Come on, Joe. What now? Your acting is as placid as mine. My partner Joe is short screen. <laughs> Aggravating Joe always hits my funny bone. He really thrashes me. <laughs> the phone rang at 7.47 a.m. A fact I could do so without ever looking at my watch, because since Frank walked in, Guy Lombardo played one chorus of the minute waltz. <laughs> This is Claude Poppenheimer, CGL of Poppenheimer Bell Manufacturers Incorporated. How can I help you, Mr. Poppenheimer? I have to report to Brooklyn when I'm in clearing houses. When did this Brooklyn occur, Miss Poppenheimer? Just had to close the distance yesterday afternoon at 5. The corner of Pine Rock and Fine. Yeah, I know it. Caddy Cruz at the King's Track Club, right? Yeah, I know your beater. You've been held a lot of bar coffee, Mr. Friday. I never dreamed I'm duty, Mr. Poppenheimer. And yes, I've worked this day for five number of years. Now that exactly was stolen. Clappers. Clappers. You know, the things inside the bells that make a ring. You mean ringers? Yeah, ringers. We claim clappers in the bell making biz. I see. What were the clappers made of? Copper. In the condition at the time they were sold? Polish clean, Mr. Friday. And what are they looking at? In the clothes closet. We figured these are least like what you played saying with my fine men to the other one and get the knee hooks on them. Looks like the couple was inside the head. Who just saw those clappers were missing? A clean lady. Her name? Clara Cooper. Did you see anything? She heard clamor and clacking noises from the cloak room while she was cleaning the entrance corridor and spotted the thief clipping the clasp from the clothes closet. Clipping the clasp? Yes, with a claymore. A claymore? You mean the mini of sword used by Scottish Highlanders in the 16th century? I know. There are quicker ways of breaking that lock, like using a crowbar. But Clara's good to her word, Mr. Friday. She wouldn't make up anything like this. Still, it's probably one of the more significant clues one needs to break on this case. Did she get a good look at the culprit? She sure did. After he caught the cloudy, he climbed out of the third story window and made his getaway. Back up a minute, Mr. Cloud, however. The third story window? Our playing house was recently converted from the cathedral of St. Clement when the congregation moved across town. We haven't finished all the renovations yet. Did Miss Cooper see what vehicle the suspect was driving? She didn't get it a good enough look. Some vehicle car. A car there. Did she give you a good description of the thief? That's a clincher, Mr. Friday. She thinks it's one of our employees. And his name? Clive Clifford. Figures. What do you tell me about Mrs. Clifford? No, he's a native of Cleveland. No, Mr. Clifford, but what I mean is, does he have any distinguishing features? Well, he has a cleft lip. One other thing that's peculiar. He has a strange habit of wearing the shoes that are two sizes too small for him. Close in clogs. Clearly, he made quite a racket when we ran off. Footsteps were clapping on the floor and all. Do you believe Mr. Clifford had a smart for copper clappers? Frankly, Mr. Friday, I'm clueless. Is that called for me, Joe? Hey, can you see him on the phone, Frank? Beat it, scram. Go get a copy and done it. Tomorrow you're in and check on that thrash sheet. Are any of these details that may help you, Mr. Friday? Can you come up with anything? Nothing collusive. We're running the backbone check on Clifford now. I never would expect this implied. Oh, I should have to work on time, clean cut, clean shaven. Of course, punctuality is compulsory on a line of work. Here's Clifford's rap sheet, Joe. Wow. Mr. Coppenheim, here's Mr. Clifford's a man with a history. His rap sheet reads more like a rap heap. Runs as long as Tulsa with one piece. Arrested for 2,147 counts of heavy burglary, but he got out every time, except the last time. Court issued a verdict of guilty by reason of insanity. Just committed him to the care of psychiatric clinician Dr. Carl Clyburn with the Klondike Clinic for the criminal and insane outside San Clemente. Interviewed employee only a week after he staged a rather clandestine escape. He engaged in a struggle with nurse Cloak Clemenzel, took his nursing uniform, put it on, and used the right device to facility. Mr. Friday, you don't need to suggest it. That's right, Mr. Bottenheimer. In the official psychiatric diagnosis, Clyde Clifford was classified as a compulsive cut dominion. God. Clifford specializes in cloaking bag of schemes like this. He has a clear cut case. After this, no court in California is going to grant clemency. Detective Clyde has to be stopped. But who would be honest about that? I'm not listening to it and sum this up. At the close of business yesterday afternoon, while playing in the patron's corner, the current house on my father Hammond Colbert, his entry at the corner of Claremont and Clyde, Caddy Cooper, and the Kickback Club. Playing Lady Claire Cooper, playing she heard Claremont cooking sounds from the cloak room, cut clean, cut clean, shaving, cut with compulsive cut demand, had Clyde Clifford from Cleveland. Previous committed to the Claremont Clinic, but Claremont is saying, outside Claremont Clement, and another chair, psychiatric clinician, out of the club, Clyde Burton, before his clandestine escape, during which he was engaged with a struggle with Nurse Cole Clemenso, out of a collection of clean copper covers, like Christmas plans for the clothes lines, reflecting a claymore, found out his prayer story window, and made his hand away in clumpy clients, and close-fitting clients and cloths. Wow, that was awful. You can say that again, Dick Clifford. I'd rather not, Mr. Clumber. It's all the same to you. In this case, it's enough to take anybody's breath away. We'll get back to you. No. It's time to meet me on front. Let's call the boys in the lab. We'll go up on the ride. Thanks, Joe. Yes, Mr. Clumber. Happy 
you know it's me. I'm a detective. It's my job. It's a call. I went back one more thing to the store. Detective's for the neighbor. Can I get my hands on the line? Yes. I'll clobber.